Welcome. I'm John Grimsmo, and this is Knife Making Tuesday, week 12. Uh, sorry I didn't make a, a video for week 11. Um, <clears throat> I really didn't get any shop time. I was on the computer for a lot, uh, redesigning the knife quite a bit. Um, so I just got a bunch of uh, SolidWorks time, and it wasn't really worth shooting any video. So week 12, I got an exciting week lined up for today. Um, I kind of gave up on the, the button lock idea, because as you saw in my week 10 video, um, it just wasn't doing what I wanted it to do, and I, I could spend another six weeks screwing around with this. So I just want a knife that works and is finished. And everybody's asking for a frame lock anyway, so um, it's a frame lock now. So right now I'm going to cut out my new frame lock handles, a set of perfect titanium handles. And I have a really cool texture pattern that I want to try out on the front of the knife. So I'm excited to try that out too. So let's get right to it. Um, I got some cool video equipment to play with today. I'm borrowing my dad's uh, Panasonic. I don't even know what it is. Super fancy Panasonic. Here's a picture. Um, I got his GoPro as well. So I'll try to use that. And this is the camera that I normally use uh, for everything. 130 bucks on Amazon. Bought it last year. I love this little thing. So this is what I've shot all my videos that you've seen so far with. It's this little guy. So let's get so going. I've got a new... Um... <clears throat> CNC computer that uh, my buddy Sean gave me. Uh, my old one was giving me all kinds of problems and giving me keyboard errors and crap like that. So, new computer with a retardedly loud fan. Sean, I don't know how you put up with that. That thing is loud. So this is what the code looks like for what I'm making. But anyway, uh, so you can see all the operations are in there. A bunch of drilling, profile, text, uh, and then I'll flip the part over and do it do the other side in a separate operation. Alright, so I'm kind of getting done with my setup. Here's my big sheet of tie. Uh, that's where I made my handles last week. Hello! Uh, so I have to cut off that end so that it doesn't interfere with my mill. I've got my angle grinder. Love this thing. And so I'm just going to take it outside because I don't really want to deal with the smell and the dust and stuff in my small garage here. Take it outside and slice it up. Now I know that titanium is a work hardening material, so when it gets too hot, it'll get super hard. Uh, so I'm not even going to attempt to mill this section and this section where it just cut off because uh, it's going to be work hardened, let's assume. So basically this little dip right here I'm going to ignore, avoid. So I'll start machining from about this, li this line down. These are the tools that I'm going to be using for uh, my titanium handles. Quarter inch end mill, center drill, center drill, 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 eighth inch end mill, three sixteenths reamer, uh, one sixteenth ball mill for engraving, and a two flute quarter inch. So the first thing I got to do is bolt the plate down to the table, but uh, my machine isn't very uh, strong, like the, the horsepower of the spindle isn't strong enough really. To, uh, to drill through this material with a larger uh, drill bit. So I'm using my, I'm using an end mill, sorry, I'm using an end mill to circularly go down the hole and make my holes that way. It works fine. my uh, 316 Serena, nice and slow at 350 RPM ish. That's what it's supposed to be anyway.
all in all, turned out pretty good this time. See, I left little tabs right there, and there, and there. The one right here ended up too thin, and just uh, disappeared, because it was too thin. This one's a little bit too thin. This one also disappeared, because it was too thin. This one down here is nice and chunky, so I'll try to make them all that size. But yeah, now, I mean, they should, uh, they should come out no problem. Ta-da! So... As you can see, there's a huge lip on the bottom edge. Uh, and I did that on purpose. Not just the ragged part, but... Like a quarter way up the edge. Um, that's because when I flip it over, this will be the side that you see, the front side of the knife. And then when I do my corner rounder, it will get rid of that. Anyway. Uh, yep, pretty happy. Hopefully everything fits and works good, and we'll find out soon enough. These are all the metal shavings from the operation I just did. Uh, most of them anyway. Uh, something really cool about titanium metal shavings is they're not sharp at all. They're very springy and, and um, oh, what was the word that I just had? I don't know. Soft. They're like steel wool almost. Like I could squeeze onto these with bare fingers and I have no fear of cutting myself. Um, unlike steel shavings or stainless which tend to be very sharp and pokey. So this is just very cool. It's, it's so light and uh, fluffy. Very weird, but awesome. All right, next little project is to put use of make use of all these chunks of aluminum. Uh, this is a new fixture that I'm making. I'm calling or it's called a soft jaw, and I uh, see the middle piece. Um, it's got four locator holes that fit perfectly into four pins that I have on my table here. Pin. So this thing will be pretty repeatable. I'll be able to just dump it down there. And it's, uh, it doesn't wiggle at all, so it's as zeroed as it's going to get, really. Um, and then these two pieces on the end, they're going to sandwich it from either side. Like that. And then the handle is going to I will machine a pocket halfway down, halfway the thickness of a handle, so the handle will dump down, and then when I pinch the two end pieces together, it will, um, it's like a little vise, specifically made for this handle. So I'll do that next, and uh, show you in real life what it actually does. So here we have my soft jaws. Now normally people would use a vise, like a high quality vise, and build soft jaws that bolt right onto that, but I don't have a vise that I really like. So uh, I made one. Um, basically, these, the middle plate is bolted to the table, and the front and back ones move forward and backwards uh, on dowel pins, on sliders. And uh, it's a little sticky, but you know it does, it will work. Um, and I have a recessed pocket that fits uh, my handles. So notice how the top side is all rough and nasty and stuff? That's the side you're going to see. So we're going to do the corner rounder and pocket the holes and stuff that we need to in our soft jaws. So... And then just tighten down the bolts. And uh, with any luck it should work. Now I've made a soft jaw to do two pairs of handles at once. I only have one pair. Um, so on the other side, I'm just using eighth-inch spacers to uh, so that when I clamp it, it's actually gripping on something. That's my soft jaws. Cutting the lock bar right now.
using a 1 16th end mill. I'm making the slot a little bit wider than the end mill so it'll actually cut on both sides of the, uh, of the cut. And I'm doing it in two passes down. Halfway down in the first pass and then all the way down. Here I'm moving at a painfully slow uh, 1.2 inches per minute at 4,500 RPM. All right guys, check this out. This is uh, phase one of my 3D texturing that I'm trying out on my Norseman handles. Oh, that sounds bad. I'm figuring most of that chattering sound is coming from the fact that I'm still using a drill chuck so the end mill is not spinning concentrically. It sounds fun going that way. Um, but yeah, phase one is to put these awesome grooves uh, into it using a ball mill, and then phase two is to do grooves going the other way as well. So it's gonna create this bumpy textured surface. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. Surprisingly, this is working awesome so far. And as this pattern right here, it looks wicked. But it's gonna look even wickeder. Obviously going this way, it's a lot easier on the cutter because most of the material has already been removed. Yeah, you. All right, so I just pulled these out of, out of the machine and initial impressions, uh, to say that I'm ecstatic is an understatement. These are effing redonkulous. Yeah, I just made these. It's Wednesday now, so I guess it's not really knife making Tuesday, but uh, I did the bulk of the work. Well, I did all this work. Uh, on Tuesday and then all this work on Wednesday if that makes sense so a little bit of uh, burrs still in the lock bar area but you can see I did some 3D milling in there both to give it uh, some nice profile and the lines are kind of cool and I chamfered the lock bar on that side chamfered the front edge which is kind of cool the corner rounder worked awesome on this side and this is just insane. Where's my camera? This is so insane. They're pointy but they're not sharp. I left the tips uh, a little bit square. Oh my goodness. And I even put a little 3D machined groove right in front of my thumb there. So if you want to get in there with the uh, thumb stud I mean, it's going to be a flipper, but there might be a thumb stud too, so you can 
get in there with the thumb stud and flick it. So that's cool. That looks pretty good. Holy crap. Camera's backwards, sorry. That is just... And let's see. Uh, measure. You zoomed in. That helps. Zoom it out a bunch. Um, let's see what I ended up with here. 45. I think my goal was 30 thou. I'll have to check my CAD drawings because I can't remember exactly, but um, I think my goal was 30 thou. And I've got more or less 45 here. There's some burrs that are getting in my way. 42. Anyway. Um, it's got some spring tension to it. You don't want it too hard, but you don't want it too soft. And I'm no expert on frame locks. I've never owned one. But um, I'm not a fan when they're too tight. When they're, they've got such a heavy pressure to them that you can't even disengage it easily. Um, 42,000 might be magic number. It depends on a lot of variables. How long the lock bar is, etc., etc. How wide it is at uh, this point so but for this knife second tie Norseman engraved right in there don't know if you can see that wow so as I said it's knife making Wednesday and Tuesday um, there you are um, I'm thrilled I didn't get to make a blade this week, whatever. Um, I've got it designed, I still have to write the code. But, um... What? So, let's see here. First design, awesome, you know, in aluminum. The grooved pattern is pretty cool, but, uh, uh, hells yes. And then, second design, my little flipper action here. I made the flipper bigger on the design, the current design, but plane scales, lame. Oh. I have to give credit where credit is due. This pattern, uh, I was inspired by a Jens Anso um, design, sort of a, not a sprint run, what do they call it? Low production run, I think he made 20 or 25. Um, Jens Anso and a guy named, forgive me if I'm saying it wrong, Tiradashi or something, a um, little collaboration. They made a few of them with this similar pattern, so I took that uh, as inspiration. And I just ran with it, and I am so happy with how that turned out. Focus? No. Yeah, well... Anyway, guys, I'm going to have to cut it here. It's like 1 a.m. Thursday morning. And, uh... I'm just going to be playing with these for the next week in my hands, on my desk. Um, yeah. So next week, uh, blades for sure. Definitely. And I also want to um, get my lathe working. It's, it's not happy with the new computer that I put in. Um get my lathe working because I got some cool um, you can see how these are huge instead of threading the frame or threading the um, the standoffs like I did on this one um, the standoffs are going to be through holes so the bolts going to go right through it It'll be a bolt from one side and then on this side I'm making um, basically making my own nuts um, they're going to be round nuts, similar to a hinderer design, XM18. If you look that up, you see how he makes, um, I'm going to call them barrel nuts. I don't know exactly what they're called, but they're threaded little bars that will sit in here, sit flush down at the surface, and they'll be threaded through. Um, and it's going to look awesome. And it's going to work awesome. So I'm excited to do that next week. So blades and uh, standoffs and those barrel nut thingies next week. And then um, I will have to make some test blades to adjust my frame lock um, 
engagement point and uh, lock up and all that stuff. So next week, uh, yeah, test blades and then real blades and then um, finish work and, and put together an entire knife. So as always guys, thank you so much for watching, for subscribing, for following. Uh, it's really fun making these videos. I get a kick out of it. And um, it's so much fun making awesome, awesome stuff like this. This is what I dream about, and this looks so epic. So, yeah, thank you very much, and um, cheers to everybody. Take care. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.